A group of unlikelies bond over fixing unsightlies. To restore, it can be a chore, but we do press on. The pain and struggle we ignore, refining and redesigning, are hours often long until the wee hours of the dawn. Wood grain, painted or stained, furniture remains with the new life it has gained. Because we fix all of the things, and sometimes we add bling, in hopes that time doesn't reclaim the furniture we have not left the same. Welcome to a great decking challenge. May you enjoy or dislike these ugly things we chose to make right. The Ugly Duckling Challenge is meant to be a transformative challenge where each participant locates or uses an existing furniture find and transforms it into something amazing. I did not have my duck in stock, and I had a very clear understanding of what I needed to look for. So to start my search, I went to a group of thrift stores, and I want you to type in the comments how many thrift stores you think I went to before I found my duck. There's a bit of an issue with looking for cheaper or more inexpensive or even rougher looking pieces in the thrift stores in my area. Ooh, look, a mermaid coffin. Um, and it's that if you look at the price tags on a lot of antiques or even things that are in okay shape, they usually want a, a fair price for it. And by fair, I mean close to maybe 100 200 and in some cases 300 to 400 dollars. Now, to be fair, they usually do half-off sales or discounting days, but it's quite a bit different than it was a couple years ago. Prices have gone up quite a bit. So we're already on thrift store number five. I love those cabinets. They look so awesome and could be really cool to flip, but look at how much they cost. Too much. It's late in the day. I found a dresser on Facebook Marketplace. It was twenty dollars, super cheap, and uh, needs a lot of help. So, yay! <laughs> I only went to like seven thrift stores. So, yeah, fun times. All right, you guys need to prepare yourself for this amazing find. I found it on the curbside actually for free. Isn't it amazing? It's perfect. It's perfect for this challenge. Just kidding. This is my actual piece. It is an antique dresser. Came with the mirror. The mirror is basically destroyed, uh, which is a shame because it's really pretty. And the top itself has a lot of damage. It doesn't quite show as well in the initial pictures that I saw how bad the damage was, but it went all the way through the veneer and there's a lot of bubbling up on the finish itself. So that's gonna have to be taken care of. And then the front of it and the drawer pulls are missing little pieces from the handles. And in the listing, it actually showed that one of the drawer bottoms was completely broken out. So I didn't look at it before I picked it up. I know, shame on me. But I'm going to go through and take everything out, make sure that I have a good idea on how bad the damage is and as you can see a lot of the drawer is actually detached from the front drawer face so that's gonna have to be corrected the other drawer was fairly well together but the bottom of the drawer is bowed out and this one also has quite a bit of drawer separation at the dovetail joints so that will also need to be fixed you can see there's some nails that are going to need to be removed from those dovetails so that they can be set correctly. And finally, here's the drawer that had the drawer bottom completely broken off. And when I pulled it out, I realized that it was because the drawer side had actually been completely broken off. Now, I do not own a table saw, so this was not something where I could just cut a piece of wood and then cut the slide for it. So I'm going to have to change direction here and figure something else out because I cannot repair this drawer with the tools that I have. Also, fun fact, there was also a rat's nest hidden in the back of the bottom portion of the dresser. And you can see it right there. 
the bottom piece of the drawer actually had water damage and it looked like it had bowed out and there was definitely a rodent living in there. Splendid. I'm definitely not having it, as you can tell. After I saw the rat's nest, let's just say that I had a moment. Uh, a moment where everything I learned about rats and looking at that totally damaged drawer bottom, or rather the bottom of the dresser, and said, duck it. I'm going to hammer it out because it's gotta go. Probably a bit severe of a reaction, but it will all work out in the end. Don't worry, it'll work out. After I cleaned up the drawer bottom and the mess that came out of it, I grabbed some disinfectant in a bucket with a scrub brush and I thoroughly scrubbed the entire inside and outside of every single piece of this dresser. Once I did that, I also sprayed it with bleach and I let the bleach sit on it for 10 minutes. This seems to be an unfortunate trend for me. Uh, I ended up using the hose to rinse off the piece. I don't like doing this because it can cause the wood to warp, but this dresser looks like it had already been left out in the rain more than once, uh, and it also deserved a good spa day before its glow up. What I'm trying to say is it seemed like the right thing to do. I went into full salvage mode after extreme cleaning the dresser. I knew that the two bottom drawers were in rough shape. The center drawer is not something I could repair. However, I could fix the top two drawers. I needed to take them apart fully to re-glue the dovetail joints and I needed to replace the drawer bottoms because they were too badly warped. To fix the drawers, I used a decent amount of wood glue more than what I would usually use, but the dovetails looked pretty worn, and once the glue was in the joints, I just clamped the two pieces together. I'll link the corner clamps that I have in the description below in case you're interested. They're pretty useful for holding things like drawers together, um, especially when you have a corner, hence the name, corner clamp. Um, and then I used longer clamps to pull everything together. You could just use longer clamps, but I like the fact that it squares off the corners with those specific clamps. And then once everything was all together, I went back in with a damp cloth and cleaned out the excess glue squeeze out. I really wanted to have wood showing for the top, but with that deep gouge on the left side, I figured it was probably not going to happen. However, before I could make that determination of whether that was possible, I needed to strip off the finish. No matter what I decided to do here, the finish was in really rough shape, so this wasn't a wasted effort either way. And I ended up using Clean Strip, Quick Strip for 15 minute formula, and I applied that with a chip brush. I used a plastic scraper very plastic if you couldn't tell, and removed the stripper mixture. The stripper cleared off a very thick layer of the finish from the top of the dresser, so that was really useful. I came back in with mineral spirits and steel wool and scrubbed the rest of the top to deactivate the chemical and clear off any leftover residue that may have been hiding on the dresser top. So that gouge that you see on the top is one of the reasons that I decided not to keep the top wood. Um, it had actually gone down through two layers of the veneer and then the substrate the veneer was attached to, um, but I was going to try to see if maybe I could remove the veneer and use the wood that was underneath it because it looked pretty good when I checked underneath the top. Towards the bottom of the dresser there was a lot of bubbling up veneer and when you're working with this type of veneer and it's starting to chip and peel up the best thing that you can do is to remove it. Um, you can do that with a heat gun. Uh, this 
didn't really need it because it was already popping off. So I just used my chill chisel, my chisel, my chisel, and I scraped off the veneer and then I sanded down that area. I did the same thing for the sides because there were some bubbles happening there as well. After I had finished removing the bubbled up veneer, I noticed that the legs needed a lot of help. Woodworms had definitely got to this piece at some point in its lifetime. There was nothing that seemed like it was active anymore. And the reality is with quite a lot of older antique pieces, you're going to see damage from woodworms or termites that are probably no longer active. This could have happened years ago. Um, but to fix this, the bottom back left leg, specifically the one shown, had practically split in two from the damage. The leg was still intact and it needed a bit of reinforcement. So you could have chopped it off and replaced it. Um, but what I'm doing, because I don't have, like I said, I don't have the tools necessarily to do this, is I'm using two-part wood filler. Now this is going to harden very hard. You could also use Bondo, which is also in the same area you'd get the two-part wood filler. And I'm just applying this very liberally over the entire leg. And when this hardens, it's going to be very hard. And you're gonna have to sand it down. So when you're applying it, make sure you don't try to apply it in too much excess, but you do wanna have a little bit of excess because it is going to shrink up just a little bit. Leg days, they're always so rough. So rough that I had to use 100 grit sandpaper to get everything smoothed out. I'm using my Makita Orbital Sander and after the body of the dresser and the legs were smoothed out, I came back in with 120 grit sandpaper to finish the job. I wasn't looking to remove the finish on the dresser, but more so scuff up the surface. I made one last attempt to see if I could have a wood top on the dresser. And I was super excited because it has like this breadboard pattern that I was starting to see, which was really cool. But then I got closer to the inside of the wood that was there and I ended up finding more woodworm damage, which I found to be really interesting because I think the dresser may have had veneer added to it later in its life because the woodworms didn't go through the veneer at all. So this was risky business to me right here. I used my Rust-Oleum primer. There's no shellac in it. It's a really good primer and I applied two coats to the entire dresser inside and outside. However, it's an older piece and it could bleed where the tannins leach through the paint. So I was fully prepared to have to deal with this if it happened. It did not happen, thankfully, but a shellac based primer will take care of that. I went to Home Depot and picked up wood. I had them cut it to size there. Two pieces were for new drawer bottoms and the other pieces were for shelves. Yes, shelves. Thanks for the inspiration, Pinterest. The wood I selected was pre-glued pine and I had them cut it down to size to fit in the dresser itself, but it wasn't wide enough to fully cover the shelf space. So I ended up grabbing square dowels and I used my thin miter box, which I'll link below in the description if you're interested. Um, it's technically a hobby miter box, but it's very useful. And I trimmed about an inch off of the dowels so that they would fit on the ends. You can get larger miter boxes, but I didn't want to use my miter saw for this since the wood was so small. On the pine shelving boards that I had, I ended up using General Finishes Ash Gray Gel Stain, and I bought staining pads to try, which they were pretty good, but the can of Ash Gray Stain that I used was quite small, because I'll tell you this from personal experience, don't overcommit. Uh, I ended up buying the smaller container instead of the larger one so that way I could try it out and see if I liked it. And I liked it, surprisingly. It's a nice dark gray when you put it on. 
and when you wipe it off you'll start to see the wood grain pop out it's almost like a gray wash I would say for an effect but it turned out really nice after I stained the shelves, I went in with my Wooster Shortcut brush and Fusion Mineral Paint in Cobblestone. It's a white with a grayish undertone, and I used this color on the inside of the dresser. I painted all of the inside areas twice, including where the drawers were. The exterior of the dresser was painted in Fusion Mineral Paint in Homestead Blue. I was thinking rustic, modern farmhouse. I'm just putting words together and I'm not really entirely sure what to call this. I basically do what I think looks nice. The entire exterior body and drawer fronts were painted in three coats of Homestead Blue. This was my first time using Fusion Mineral Paint and quite honestly I thought it was amazing. Um, one of the things that's beneficial for Fusion Mineral Paint is that you don't require a top coat. I, however, am going to put a top coat on the top of the dresser and the shelves. So in order to do that, I'm just going to lightly scuff sand the top with 400 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to do that also to the shelves. And then I'm going to apply a water-based polyurethane to the top. I was able to salvage five of the drawer pulls off of the original dresser and I cleaned those off and degreased them and then I went back in with Rust-Oleum paint and primer, um, hammered spray paint in black and I applied one coat to the back, I flipped them over and applied two coats to the front and then I sealed them with a clear Rust-Oleum sealer. For the shelves, I ended up gluing them together and holding them with clamps overnight. The front trim pops up just a little bit, so it gives it a little bit of an edge, which is great. And I ended up using two trim nails on the left and right sides because I didn't have enough clamps, first of all, which is really kind of sad, but that'll be rectified in the near future. But the trim board was popping off, so that just gave it a little bit of extra connection with the shelf itself. All right, this might be a little bit controversial, but to connect the shelves with the dresser slides, all I did was use tight bond wood glue, several clamps, and two 10 pound weights. I know what you're thinking. For those of you that are used to working on projects like this, why didn't you nail it or screw it in? For this application and the tight fit of the shelves inside the dresser itself, I'm not concerned with the shelves coming loose. Screwing the boards down further restricts them from being able to expand and contract. Worst case scenario is in a few years, the boards pop up and need re-glued. It's not really that big of a deal and it probably won't happen. I did test also lifting the entire dresser with the shelf above it using the fully dried wood glue method and it held just fine. But if you're doing this and you want to use nails or screws, you absolutely could. If I was using individual boards, like if I had pallet boards, I would probably have used wood screws and glue simply because there's a lot of variation there and it's gonna give you a better connection for the glue to cure. I also needed to reinsert the new drawer slides and to keep the drawer from sliding out I ended up using one single nail on the back end of the drawer and that'll stop it from sliding around. You don't want to nail on the entire board but just that single nail will keep it from sliding out of the back. And it looks just as good as new. The finishing touch to this project is to come in with some Vans Furniture Polish, which is just a beeswax uh, and sweet orange oil, and I believe there's also lavender in it. And I'm applying it to the entire inside and outside of the drawers and also the drawer sliders for the top two drawers. That way they slide in and out really nicely. It also makes the drawers smell amazing. So we're finally there. We're finally to the end. And it took us a long time to get here, so let's take a look at what we came from. 
and where we ended up. The mirror, by the way, is actually a chalkboard now, and that square box sitting on top of the dresser is actually made from the drawer fronts. Special shout out and thanks to Corey at Desert DIY for hosting this challenge. I'm very happy to be a part of it. And if you guys could, go check out the playlist with all the other awesome furniture transformations. We all picked some pretty uh, junky looking furniture to fix up. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. And uh, thanks for watching.